sauce that I got. I need to put the thing in here. So cute. This is <laughs> for the jet. I am so excited. So today I have a little bit of a Sephora haul for you. These are two separate shopping trips. The first time I went into store and then I also ordered, I don't know why I said that like that, also. And I also ordered some things online as well. It's not a massive Sephora haul, but I haven't done a Sephora haul in a while because I don't really do bulk orders unless it's the Sephora sale or everything is for review but I actually made a couple leisurely orders of some new items that I was intrigued about. So we are gonna do a haul. You've seen some of these, but you've also not seen some of these, but we're just gonna talk about what's new at Sephora and what caught my eye. So let's go ahead and get into it. I'm gonna start off with this, which you've seen that I've picked up because I've already done the dedicated review. This is kind of the reason for this video in general. I went into Sephora to pick up this, and then I left with a bunch of other things, which then inspired me to purchase more online. So this was the gateway right here. So this is the NARS Soft Matte Advanced Perfecting Powder. I picked up the shade Cove. They do have a limited shade range, but this isn't a powder foundation. It is a more sheer product. But when I was in store and I was looking at the shades, they were all very odd. This shade looks pretty light on me. It is borderline to too light but I make it work and then the next shade up was so deep and the undertones were so strong so choose carefully my advice is if you're in between two shades go with the lightest one because a lighter powder can be a little bit more flattering you can utilize it to brighten areas and sculpt a little bit but anyways I really really love this powder it is worth the money. The packaging is so slim, which I think makes it great for travel. It makes it great if you're a makeup artist. I love how slim it is. It looks like a little thin mint, right? It's so tiny. I think in my review, I was like, this looks like a potato chip. This does not look like a potato chip, Morgan, but <laughs> I meant in that it was very, very thin, but the powder itself is very blurring. It helps makeup last longer for sure. I think that this powder is definitely catered for oily skin. So if you have oily skin, I really think this is going to control the oils and make your makeup last longer. As somebody with dry skin, more normal to dry. It's not super dry right now but I can see the powder on my skin. It's not undetectable. If you prep correctly, if you use a good setting spray, and let's say even if you're dry, you're going somewhere where you might get a little sweaty or it's a little humid, love this powder if you live in humidity. So this is one of my new favorite powders. I'm not gonna go and say it's an all-time favorite. It's not gonna end up being an all-time favorite, but I am enjoying my time with it. I think it's an amazing pressed powder and it's definitely worth the pickup if you're interested. As I suspected, NARS did a great job, which they always tend to do with their complexion products. Uh, Curiosity got the best of me, and this was not purposeful, but <laughs> I picked up three shades of the Too Faced blushes. So. I was actually shocked because the only shade that they had in my Sephora store was a shade that's completely sold out online. So I jumped and grabbed the shade Candy Clouds. But by the way, let me tell you what this product is. This is the Too Faced Cloud Crush Blurring Blush. And I think this whole collection from Too Faced, really, really cute. I think that these blushes remind me of Gucci blushes. The packaging is absolutely gorgeous. So I definitely wanted to pick up a few of these. So like I said, the first shade that I picked up was Candy Clouds. Now the reason that this one was kind of trending and sold out is because there's really cotton candy pink with the blue undertone shades is very, very in style right now. Everybody's looking for a dupe of the Dior shade or the Kylie shade, so this is supposed to be it, and it totally is. So that's the first shade that I applied. Depending on what makeup look I'm doing, I found that this either didn't apply or show up, or if it did, I had to really build it up. And then next, on this cheek over here, I picked up, these are two I picked up online after because I felt inspired, the shade Golden Hour, which is also a pink, but it has more warmth to it. And I applied it to this cheek, 
I have a feeling about this formula that I'm going to tell you, but let me show you the colors first. And then the last shade that I got, which is probably my favorite, this is the most neutral shade, the shade Velvet Crush. It has definitely some more depth to it, much more nude, so it's going to go good with a more versatile array of different eye looks. But all three are beautiful shades. I don't know that... I am in love with the formula. I feel like either they don't show up that well in me if my brush isn't dense enough, or if the brush that I use is too dense, if I put too much color down, I really struggle to blend it out and it can very easily look patchy on me. So I feel like I need to find the perfect brush that works with these. But either way, I feel like these don't blend as smooth. Let me know if you've had the same experience. Like I said, gonna continue playing with them. Not sure if it was my base underneath, but I had to do a lot of blending today to make sure that these blushes all looked very even on my cheeks. Overall, I think the finish of them is really pretty. They call them blurring blushes, and that I do agree with. They do have a blurring quality to them. However, kind of patchy, so that's how I feel about that. I couldn't get those to blend out that well, so I'm not too sure if I recommend these yet, and of course, I ordered them in three colors. So yeah. Um, I picked up an eyebrow product. This is new from Benefit. I was very curious. This is the Fluff Up Brow Wax, and they describe it as a flexible brow texturizing wax. Shout out to Benefit for selling minis, so that way you don't need to break the bank. But I got this to see how it compared to my favorite Too Faced Laminating Brow Wax, which is the best brow wax I've ever, ever used. So. I have decided this is definitely not as good as the Too Faced. So for one, I don't like the spoolie as much. It doesn't separate the brows in the, the way that the Too Faced does. That just makes it look much more thick and full. It's just like a normal cheap spoolie that does an okay job, but it's just not the Too Faced one. Also, what I don't like about this one as much as the Too Faced is that it doesn't dry down hard. I kind of like the feeling of it drying down. It gives it more hold throughout the day, more longevity. This one, your brows continue to stay a little soft. Now, this does a good job holding, but it's not as good because it doesn't dry down. It continues to feel a little waxy in the brows. But I think someone might like this if you didn't like how hard the Too Faced made your brows feel. And two, I had someone tell me that they felt like the Too Faced, there was just too much product coming out. It was overwhelming for the brows. This does not put as much product in the brows. You can see it was a white wax, but it definitely applies less than the Too Faced. So while I still prefer the Too Faced, I think the Too Faced is the end all be all. I definitely can see some people if you didn't like the Too Faced, you might like this Benefit one. So I think it's good. It does hold my brows up really well. So that is something to be said because my brows, while thin, they don't stand up how I want them to. They don't like to stay styled. They are quite unruly. This does a good job. So I do like this. It's hard when I have the Too Faced in my life because everything is better than the Too Faced, but I do like this. I think they did a good job with it, and I definitely think that there is a crowd of people who might like this. This next purchase that I made was quite pricey because... They are the new Hourglass lipsticks. So I picked up two in store and then I picked up three online. And then lo and behold, after I placed those orders, Hourglass actually sent me a PR package of every single shade in the line, 21 shades. So my most previous upload was actually me swatching all of them, but I still wanted to show you the five shades that I spent my, you know, my hard earned money on. What shades did I deem worthy of spending the money on? Because these are expensive, they are $38 each. Um, now I'm not saying these are the top five best shades, but these were the ones when I was looking online and in store that I felt that I would use the most, that I shelled out my own money for. So let's start off with the packaging of these. They come in this really gorgeous gold packaging. It's not as heavy as I feel like most luxury lipsticks are. It's a magnetic closure. I think they look luxe, but they don't feel luxe. This is what the lipstick looks like. Overall, I can tell you based on the formula, very, very hydrating. Not extremely long lasting, but decent for a cream lipstick. I definitely think it's a good luxury formula. Do you need to run out? Is it an absolute emergency to pick these up? No but I think they are beautiful. So let me swatch the ones that I picked up. So first we have Alpine. This is the lightest shade. It's definitely the most nude. 
So if you're looking for a warmer, peachier nude, Alpine is the way to go. This range overall has some pretty deep shades, so you're not going to get a lot of supernatural ones. And then we also have Lotus right here, which is more pink. Now the lipsticks that I have on today are these two mixed together. So I have this peachy shade and then the pink shade to brighten it up. So that's a mixture of Lotus and Alpine, but I do like Lotus because it's more pink. Next, I have Tide, which Tide is a little bit more pinky of a nude. This one I think I'll end up using every day. This one is still one of my favorites even after swatching all 21 shades. This next one, Dove, is also still one of my favorites. And I like this one because it's a bright shade, but it's not too bright. You know, it's not a super bold shade, but it does brighten up the face. So I definitely recommend Dove if you're looking for something unique, a little bit brighter, but not too obnoxious. And then this is the deepest shade that I picked up for myself. So the shade is Flora. I didn't end up loving this one on my lips as much. It's a plumish kind of shade. I don't see myself wearing it too often, but it is a good deeper shade, so yeah. So those are the five shades of the Hourglass lipsticks that I picked up. And then finally, I picked up a lip gloss from Dior. I can't avoid Dior. As much as I don't want to buy Dior, some of their products are so amazing and their stands and displays are always so appealing. So I picked up this Dior Addict Lip Maximizer. It's a plumping lip gloss. Did they reformulate these? Because they said they were new on the display. I picked up the shade number 13 beige because I love a good beige shade. I really love this formula. It's super duper shiny. Honestly, one of the most shiny lip formulas I've ever tried. Gorgeous on the lips. I wish I had picked up a different shade because this reads clear. Doesn't give as much color as I was hoping, but they have a bunch of other beautiful colors in the line that I'm interested in trying. It has that minty plumping smell that a lot of other Dior lip glosses have. But anyways, love the formula of this. The shade beige is almost clear, so keep that in mind. And there we have it, you guys. That is everything that I picked up from Sephora a couple days ago. Like I said, not the largest haul, but I still had a lot of fun shopping. And actually, I was in a shopping mood this day, and I placed a pretty big Ulta order as well. So I'll have an Ulta haul coming up soon once all of those packages arrive. But I wanted to share what was new at Sephora, what caught my eye, and what I ended up spending my money on. So I hope you guys enjoyed this haul and found it helpful. Have you tried any of these? What feedback I want the most is on these two face blushes. Do you like these or did you notice them being kind of patchy and harder to blend? Anyways, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, I would really appreciate it if you took the time to do so. And make sure you like this video as well. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.